Well, the book is about the global transformation we're experiencing. We're at a particular crisis point and we have to understand historically why the crisis is uh, producing a new class structure. And essentially what happened was back in the 1980s, the neoliberals took command of the economic policy and strategy and they have led to a global market system taking shape. And in the process, what's been happening is that we've expanded the global labor market, put huge downward pressure on our living standards in Europe, and produced a new class structure. That's the background. The class structure is not the 99%, 1% that uh, Occupy movement and indignados like to focus on. It's more complex than that. We've got a, a plutocracy at the top of a disgustingly uh, rich and powerful billionaires and multi-billionaires. A long way below that, you've got a salariat, as I call it, people who've still got employment security and so on. The old working class, the proletariat, is, is shrinking. And it's the precariat that is growing. And the precariat is a dangerous class in the sense that it rejects the old political ideologies of the 20th century. And you can define the precariat as a combination of factors. There are millions of people, young and not so young, who are having three, combina three factors. One is that they are being habituated, subject to pressures, to accept a life of unstable labor and unstable living in which they are expected to have casual jobs in and out of jobs and unemployment uh, but more importantly without any occupational identity any occupational narrative to give to their lives and they have to do a lot of work that doesn't get counted a lot of that uh, is unpaid it's a form of exploitation and uh, at the same time they find that their level of education is above the level of labor that they have to do. So that, that's one characteristic. The second characteristic is that they have to rely mainly on money wages. They don't get any benefits. They don't get any rights-based uh, benefits, state benefits. And they're living on the edge of debt, uh, unsustainable debt. One mistake, one little mishap, and they're out and homeless and so on. And the third thing that is very important uh, is that this is a first class that is losing rights, losing the ordinary rights of a citizen, and they're being turned into supplicants, asking for favors, having to satisfy bureaucrats, always being under control. And the combination of circumstances is producing what I call the four A's. Anomy, a sense of despair. Alienation, a sense that they can't do what they would like to do and have to do a lot of things they don't want to do. A sense of anxiety and a sense of anger. And this anger is very transformative, potentially, because it's a new dangerous class in that it rejects the old social democracy, laborist agendas of the 20th century, but is not wanting to accept the neoliberalism. It is rejecting both and looking for an alternative. And the interesting thing since uh, 2011 is that the precariat has now suddenly becoming a class for itself. And what that means is millions of people instead of seeing themselves as failures, instead of seeing themselves as having deficiencies, they are suddenly seeing the structures out there and are recognizing themselves as part of the precariat. And they can stand up and say, I am proud, I, am be I belong to a precariat, 
I have nothing to be ashamed about. That is the system wanting me to be like this. I'm not an underclass. I'm not a member of the underclass. And that is important because only when millions of people become aware that they are part of a class can they come together and start forging a new politics, what I call a new politics of paradise. And I think we are in that stage now where suddenly millions of people are identifying themselves as the precariat and the political energy is transforming it into a new dangerous class that is threatening the state. And that I think is a very important phase in the counterattack. That's why we're seeing new political movements like Podemos, like Syriza, like the Sinistra Ecologica Libertà in Italy, like various social movements that are coming up. These movements are shaping a new progressive politics. So in the next few years, there will be mistakes, there will be false steps, but you're seeing an agenda and I'm trying to articulate what a charter of demands on behalf of the precariat would look like. But just as all of us who are social scientists and people who are listening and analyzing it, I'm an economist, so I see the economic issues. Our job is to supply the ammunition, supply the ideas for giving security and reviving a sense of future. A sense that we can have a good society, that we can have more freedom, we can have more equality, and we can have solidarity back. And that is the agenda that we have to forge. And it is up to the new politicians, the political activists, to articulate that agenda. And that is basically what the two books are about. I'm often asked whether the new political movements like Podemos, Syriza and a number of other movements can succeed against the Troika, against the neoliberal agenda. And the answer is, we must try. And the important thing is that the precariat must become a class for itself. And it's important for the new politicians in the progressive uh, sphere of society to use a concept that can describe us as the people. And in doing so, they will forge a unity of purpose. And only when there's a unity of purpose will that vital change take place. Fear will change sides. For the last 30 years, fear has been on our side, we have been fearful and we have made concessions and the neoliberal hegemony has continued. Now only if we become a united social force for change, saying ça suffit, enough is enough, and demand change, will fear change sides again. And that, I think, is where we are and why it is so vitally important to see this in international terms. Collectively, we have strength if we make the people who are the plutocracy and the elites making all this money in the financial markets and elsewhere, make them realize that they have to change. They have to move away from things like quantitative easing which is a way of enriching the financial markets and the trillion euros that is going to be spent a little bit will trickle down perhaps but the incomes in the financial markets will be boosted they have to start realizing that they cannot spend the money like that and not face social consequences. And the social consequences will be that we get angrier and angrier, not become 
revolutionary in, a, in, a, in an infantile sense, but be demanding changes in such a way that they will have to start making concessions. And it is about time, because the inequalities are grotesque. The insecurities are grotesque. They're unacceptable and they're unsustainable for the reasons I mentioned earlier, including the fact that this neo-fascist movement out there is growing in strength and is a threat to all of us. So I think we do have to realize that what movements like Podemos and Syriza are doing it is, is setting, setting out on a journey in a sense that they, of course, will make mistakes, but we must support such movements because they're breaking the acceptance, which has been too long part of social democ democracy, labor parties, and so on. They've accommodated to the neoliberal agenda without confronting it. And, and this is now a point where we must confront it. Thank you.